Today we're going to talk some about the 68 RFE transmission. This is something that's a hot topic of today. Um, we have a lot of questions that roll in about the 68 RFE and it seems like I'd like to just try to give some informa general information about the transmission, what its capabilities are, what us as transmission builders and shops are kind of up against uh, on these transmissions. So start off with the transmission itself is a great daily driver in a stock application, guys very seldom have problems with them. I mean, occasionally you have low line pressure codes. Um, you have, there's a, the switch valve in the valve body is, is sometimes worn that can be problematic or can blow the accumulator cover off the side. There are a couple uh, occurrences that that happens, but as a general rule, they're not a terrible transmission in the stock application. The problems really roll into when we can tap into the truck with EFI Live and we can quickly make 500 horsepower to the tire and now the transmission is angry at life. Um, fourth gear in these transmission is direct drive. Fifth gear is overdrive. Sixth gear is essentially a double overdrive. So the amount of torque multiplication that goes on the overdrive clutch um, in sixth gear is huge. And the overdrive clutch is actually smaller than what the 48RE clutch is, so to speak. Um, so we have to be careful on how much power we add in those overdrive gears. That's why if you um, add some gear reduction via changing your gear ratio and in your actual axles, so if you have a 342 gear truck and 35 inch tires, that's going to add a lot of, of torque multiplication into your transmission. Add that onto your double overdrive, your final overdrive ratio, you have a lot of load going on your overdrive clutch. And at 500 horsepower, your, your overdrive clutch is not gonna hold. Here, you can see this is a upgraded overdrive clutch. This is, the, uh, this is out of the Sonic drum, and the Sonic drum is what we generally use when we build them. This is the size of the uh, direct clutch out of the 48RE for comparison. Uh, so you can see we've gone to a, a dual-sided clutch. The factory ones have single-sided clutches, which are even thinner and smaller. Um, so you can make these some better, but you cannot make them as strong as what you can the 48RE transmission. Okay, so talking about some of the design differences in the transmissions from one to the other, um, the 68RFE has what I would consider an overlapping transmission where your C4 clutch is engaged. Uh, say in third gear, let's take your 3-4 shift for, for an example. Your C4 clutch is engaged and your overdrive clutch is the next clutch to come on. And the two will have to overlap a little bit so that you don't get a flare shift. And in stock form, it's not a problem. But then to make these transmissions hold power, we add a more aggressive clutch so we can hold more horsepower. Well, as you add a more aggressive clutch, now you tend to have two clutches coming on. Shift timing becomes very critical, and you're more likely to either get a bind or slip a clutch a little bit. And slipping a clutch over 20,000 miles will end up making that new aggressive clutch worse, like it'll actually wear friction material off of it. So you can't just go extremely aggressive in clutch material to gain all this holding power without sacrificing some reli reliability and longevity. That's why you see some of the transmission manufacturers offer a, a thousand horsepower unit or something like that, but they don't recommend that for high miles because they've run a more aggressive material and in that shift overlap you'll actually wear the material down. So for the street trucks we have to keep it to a a uh, reasonable uh, clutch that's not too aggressive, otherwise we end up taking life expectancy out of it. So we kind of fix one problem when we build these 68s, but then we also create another because of how, by design, of what we're dealt with. So I feel confident that we can build a 68 here that I could put on the dyno, I could put it in my quad cab at 1400 horsepower, I could lock it in fourth gear, which is direct drive, and make a 1500 horsepower dyno pull. It would hold it. But as soon as I'd go to the drag strip and make two or three passes with it, that transmission would be hating its life. It'd probably, it'd probably burn, be burned up in two or three passes, honestly, because of the way the shift turn laps are. Um, that's why when we sell a transmission, we generally recommend them for the guys that daily driving, towing, and occasional hot rodding. They're not, I'm not selling them to the guys that are going drag racing on Friday nights. 
and I'll tell them to the guys who want to race point series and ODSS unless it's a close to you know 500 horsepower truck or less. So what can you do when you when you go to, to give your 68 RV the best uh, chance of living? Uh, I see a lot of guys who go out and buy a new 67 truck or they buy a, you know say a 2012 or a new fourth gen to them but it's not new and they the first thing they do is they buy a six inch rough country lift they buy 37 inch tires and they delete it and tune it and ideally they've just set themselves up for a transmission failure because the tall tire without changing the gear ratio in the truck has an extreme amount of torque multiplication on the transmission and your overdrive clutch will not live a long life unless you're manually selecting fourth gear and just keeping it out of fifth and sixth all together with those big tires. So do yourself a favor, if you're gonna put bigger tires on your truck, re-gear accordingly. If you're on a 37 inch tire, put a 456 gear in the, in the axle. If you're on a 35 inch tire, run at least a 373 or a 410. As you change your gear ratios in your axle, it puts more load on the ring and pinion and less on the transmission because it's reducing that gear ratio to the transmission itself. So what we've been doing more than anything here at Firepunk is we've been working on making better parts, figuring out what works best. We've tried a lot of different drums. We've tried, uh, we see drums from Suncoast and Revmax and Sonex. They're all great pieces. Um, but I have yet to see any of those drums be a 800 horsepower capable transmission for 100,000 miles. You just simply, if you race them and do a lot of shift transitions with an aggressive clutch, um, you can hold the power, but it's not a forever transmission. And neither is a 48RE, but we, because of the shift overlap not happening in the 47s and 48s, we can generally get a much longer life out of a 47 or 48RE than you can a 68RFE. But I also don't recommend just everybody to just swap from a 68 to a 48 uh, because like my 2016 I drove that for 95,000 miles and three years and tow trailers made it to every race it never broke down on me the transmission was great I ran the stock transmission uh, for 60,000 miles and then I built the transmission and ran the built transmission for the last 45,000 miles and I had good results, but it was also 500 horsepower, uh, had 33 inch tires, and I drove it with a little bit of responsibility. I'd occasionally manually select third gear and do a fishtail out on the road, have a little bit of fun with it, but I wasn't stopping and doing crazy burnouts. I wasn't doing a lot of highway pulls. I protected fifth and sixth gear because I knew that that truck's job was to be able to get the race trailer to and from races. That wasn't my hot rod. So for that application, the 68 RFE is great. For the application of what I do, we're running like a 770 or 670 truck where you're racing it every other weekend and you're putting 80 to 100 passes a year on, I would recommend a 48 swap because that's gonna be more geared toward competition, not geared to towing as much. The, the split gears in the 68 RFE is a better application for a daily driver tow truck. So if you got a, if you got a truck, 68 truck, and you're 700 horsepower or less, and you're okay with just using your brain when you're driving it, go ahead, build the 68. You're not gonna regret it. It's still gonna daily drive nice. You're still gonna tow nice. Um, but when it comes to racing, you have to kind of pick and choose what it's worth to you because um, you can only do it so often before you're doing a rebuild. The guys that are racing all the time, I see them come back after 40,000 miles and need a set of clutches. So you can kind of choose your battles on what you want. Um, that's why I tell guys buy a 4th gen and tow your race truck and if you have a 4th gen and you want to turn it into a race truck, the 68 RFE is not the best platform long term for just an all out race truck. Hard part wise, uh, billet input shafts are available and there are slowly more parts becoming available for hard parts. Not that often that we see the insides of these really broken, but occasionally we do see like an overdrive hub support broken. We had one come in the other day and it really just yard sailed the transmission. It broke everything connected to it. Um, and there was just a lot of damage done all the way through. And that was also on a truck that's 37s. It's a welding rig, it's heavy, tows a uh, fifth wheel camper a lot. So it is seeing a lot of load. And I don't know that that was necessarily just a sheer load uh, or horsepower break, because that truck's not that much horsepower. 
um, but it's seeing a lot of stress load on the transmission. That's why I always recommend re-gearing the truck if you really do need to have the big tires and, and you're going for a big truck look because it seems like it's kind of a going thing with the four gens. Everybody wants 800 horsepower in a big truck. Uh, so that's fine as long as you're willing to re-gear the truck because it seems like it's the hardest sell for me to get a customer to re-gear the truck. Nobody wants to do it, but they also don't want to have broken parts. So do yourself a favor. If you're going to build a 68, gear yourself appropriately, choose your tire size, choose your gear ratio. It takes the whole combination to make a 68 RFE successful. So here at Firepunk, if you get a, have us build a 68, we're gonna put a billet input shaft in it. We're generally gonna use a Sonics overdrive drum. We're gonna do a heavy duty low reverse sprag. We're gonna do an upgraded clutch kit where we're adding clutches throughout uh, in like four C's, two C's. Uh, we're going to do a built valve body with the bonded separator plate is what we've normally been using. The Sonics accumulators uh, is a really nice piece. We'll vacuum test your switch valve and your valve body. Those often have leaks where we have to bore them and uh, put an oversized valve in it. Either that or you have to go to a like a DNJ billet lower separator uh, plate. There's a lot of talk about that right now, how much deflection there is in the valve body. Um, we have tried that on some. I have not seen a direct correspondence, uh, one with billet and one without, that ones last longer because it hasn't been around long enough. I'll tell you in 100,000 miles. So everybody wants it now. New part comes out. It's the latest, it's, it's the best thing ever, uh, but nobody's really put 100,000 miles on these things yet to really know is that going to solve the problems that we want to solve. We'll also do double deep pan, uh, triple disc converter uh, with a damper in it and a flex plate and that setup ideally we can sell to a guy that if he's under 700 horsepower it's going to be as reliable as the driver is smart. One of the reasons that we like the 68 RFE for towing and why we recommend it uh, to give you an example is in 2017 we went to the king of the streets and our GPS took us on a pretty hill jack route. We did kind of went off the, the main highways went through some really small towns and it was in the middle of the hills in the backwoods of Pennsylvania. And here in Plain City, we have all flat roads and I can't even really relate with customers when it comes to hills and curves. But we got out there and we're all, we have three trucks towing three trailers and Landon was in his truck. It's got a Firepunk built 48, a really good transmission that races all the time, has great luck with it. And I had, I was in my 16 with our built 68 uh, jersey was in his uh, mega cab with our built 68 in it and we were going through these small towns and the 68 RFE trucks handled the low speed 25 to 40 mile an hour low speed hills way better than the 48 RE truck because we could we can bring torque converter lockup in at 25 mile an hour in the 68 RFE truck and it's got a one-to-one -one fluid coupling going up through the winding hills of the little towns and the 48 RE doesn't grab lockup until 45 mile an hour unless you manually hit your switch. And so Landon was always having to put it in manual second, lock the converter, try to make it up the hills. His training temp ended up at 200 degrees and our transmission temps in the 68s never went over like 168. So there are applications that the 48 isn't even nearly as good as the 68. That's why I tell guys to not, not just jump on the 48 RE swap right away. Make sure you know what you want to do with your truck before you make the decision of where to spend your money. Because the last thing I want to do is take your money on a 68 RFE when it's completely the wrong application and then you come back with a burned up and then you have to spend your money all over again on a 48 RE. So we do a lot. We're trying to educate our customers on where the do's and the don'ts are of the 68 so that you guys can make educated decisions on what you really want uh, out of your truck and your transmission.